Let us imagine. Let us imagine that we are faced with a murder. Let us imagine that when we wake up in the morning tomorrow, we hear that a mother and son have been murdered in the north of Toronto. Wouldn't everyone be shocked? The murder will be talked about every day of every week throughout the year, wouldn't it? Then imagine that the next day you hear that a mother and her daughter were murdered in Vancouver. The next day a mother, a father, and their 18-month-old girl in Ajax this time. Then the next day, two sisters in Halifax. The day following that, suddenly a family of four disappeared in Edmonton. A mother, father, and two daughters. Suddenly the next day, 55 PhD, masters, and undergraduate students in Edmonton, Halifax, London, Toronto, Waterloo, Hamilton, Windsor, Winnipeg, and Vancouver are murdered in cold blood. They're murdered in the most vicious manner, cruel and without mercy. The day after that, 29 children murdered in the most, in the, in many uh, Canadian cities. The day following those murders, a man who was supposed to take his grandson to soccer practice in Mississauga. Murder after murder, and not even limited to Canada, a family of four from Stockholm are murdered too. A husband and wife who married three weeks earlier murdered in London, UK. Two children and their mother in Germany. Most of them are of Iranian origin. 11 innocent Ukrainian citizens were among the victims. It seems as if all of them were victims of the same murder. When we look at the crime scene, we notice that they, they were murdered, their belongings looted, not even little dolls or books were spurred, and their telephones crushed and tampered with. Even their wedding rings ripped from their lifeless, lifeless fingers. How would everyone respond to such atrocities? After the first murder, after the second, and after 177 murder, wouldn't you ask the federal police who murdered all these people? Wouldn't you ask the authorities to initiate, crim initiate criminal investigations? Wouldn't the entire country, even the world, be thrust into mayhem, fear, and terror, asking why, by whom? And how exactly? Then if they tell you that all of these murders were due to one person's mistake, or even that of 10 people, what would you think? Wouldn't you doubt your own sense of reason? Then if you hear that the, the perpetrator is a criminal organized mafia behind serial killings with a long history of murder, what would you think then? If you are told that you must remain calm because this murderous mafia might murder more Canadians and must not be provoked, what would you say? Or if you are told that if provoked, they might take more Britain's hostage. Then if you are told that you must be patient and the police will one day deal with the murder, what would you do? It might be even worse. If you hear that the murderous mafia is put in charge of investigating their own crime and they will soon report on their murders as judge and jury and even choose your lawyers for the victims, wouldn't you laugh? Would it drive you to madness? What would you do? Let us not imagine, because this has happened. This is what happened to flight PS752. My wife, my only child, along with 174 other innocent human beings and an unborn child were murdered in cold blood. They told us to be patient and we listened. They told us that all options are on the table and we waited for these options to be checked off. But now, after two years, we realize that our patience has not paid off. Canada must stand for justice, and it is time for us all to stand on the right side of the history, today, now, and with urgency. 
But despite all of our efforts, day and night, for the past two years, the RCMP refuses to open a criminal case. The Islamic Republic of Iran bullies Canada and refuses to recognize it as a legitimate claimant, let alone come to the negotiation table in good faith and with truth as their currency. Instead, we keep writing polite letters, one after another, and ask them to please take us seriously. In this country, where those innocent victims live lawful, hopeful lives, the lobbies and apologies of the Islamic Republic of Iran are busy with money laundering and interference, living lavish lives. There is no talk of Magnitsky sanctions and no mention of listi listing the entirety of the IG IRGC as a terrorist organization. Everyone is watching us in silence instead of listening to the cries of the Iranian people, the victims of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Our patience is exhausted. Today is the day when diplomacy ends and justice begins. Criminals do not talk the language of diplomacy. Justice is not negotiable. The authorities must know that we will not relent with an empty, shallow apology or political gamesmanship. We will not contemplate any compensation before the truth and nothing but the truth revealed. We remain resolute in our demands that are clear and specific. One, we do not understand the delays, the delays in taking this case to ICAO Council. This case must be taken before the ICAO Council today with only one goal, and that is the truth. And it must, it must be reached with full transparency and accountability. Two, Canada's RCMP must open criminal investigations and initiate its criminal court proceedings without further delay. It must emphasize the terrorist nature of this crime. The only platform must be in Canadian, must be either in Canadian federal courts or the International Criminal Court without any interference from the perpetrators of this heinous crime. Three, we demand arrest warrants for every one of them, for the leader of the Islamic Republic of Iran, for the senior commanders of IRGC, for all members of their National Security Council. Ukraine must be supported to take this case to the International Criminal Court. Four, the IRGC must be listed in its entirety as a terrorist organization. Magnitsky sanctions must be implemented and until they capitulate to the law, the Islamic Republic of Iran's assets must be frozen without delay. We must fight for Canada today. We must fight for human rights and dignity today instead of carrying the burden of shame decades later when the truth is inevitable, inevitably revealed, the burden of shame that comes with crudility towards evil thoughts and deeds that result in unimaginable crimes. Yes, evil begins with a thought, often deceptive. No matter what happens, we the families shall continue to fight, even if left alone with no support. All that is important for us is to reveal the truth and nothing but the truth. What we fight for and what unites us is justice, justice, justice. We shall never forget, nor shall we ever forgive.